And another group of Boko Haram captives is now free. According to Nigeria's military, this report comes on the heels of the military's liberation of nearly 300 girls and women just days ago. I spoke earlier with Arise News correspondent Adore Achumba, who is in Lagos, Nigeria. Adure, we just reported yesterday that a group of 293 women and girls were rescued from the Sambisa forest. Now a whole different group of girls and women have been rescued. Tell us about this latest rescue. That's right, the military again making yet another surprising discovery. Another group of women, not even the ones that they were expecting to find when they started this offensive on the Sambisa forest. A group of 160 uh, people, 100 of them children, 60 of them uh, women, and we've seen pictures of them, many of them emaciated, uh, looking very distressed, uh, very, very moving uh, uh, pictures that we've seen. Uh, and right now the military says that they are being processed and debriefed uh, and also going through medical checks to make sure uh, they didn't pick up any diseases while they were there in the uh, forest. And describe for us the circumstances under which both these groups have been discovered. This is a strategic operation that's been ongoing, correct? That's right. Uh, the operation has been ongoing for the last uh, two weeks now. The uh trying to get the uh, insurgents out of the Sambisa Forest. Sambisa Forest is believed to, the, uh, to be the stronghold, the last stronghold of Boko Haram. Uh, it is also known as the location where they took that uh, group of students that they kidnapped in uh, 2014, in April 2014, the Chibok girls. Uh, and that's really who the military was going and hoping uh, to find in Sambisa Forest. That group oh, apparently was the group that was kidnapped in uh, around December 17 from the Gumsuri village. Uh, they, there, they reported about 185 uh, women and children kidnapped and about 35 uh, villagers killed. Now, this new group of 160, uh, they haven't been identified, uh, but really they were found in about uh, 13 camps in Sambisa Forest, just about uh, going in about 50 kilometers into Sambisa Forest, which is a very uh, large game reserve. They still have more ground to cover, and they feel that that haven't seen what they've seen, that they expect to find more camps and probably more hostages. That is astounding. And what's also amazing is after finding these two large groups of women and girls, that they are not the Chibok girls that we've been reporting on for the, for the last year. Is there any update, any idea uh, on the government's part of where they are, or whether or not they're closing in on them? Right. No knows exactly where the Chibok girls are and who else they're going to find in that forest or anywhere else in the northeast where Boko Haram may still be holding sway. Uh, recall this is an area that's been described uh, to be as large as uh, Belgium uh, and all of a sudden within the last couple of weeks uh, about two months now uh, it has been whittled down to just the Sambisa forest area and of course uh, in the border areas the Madeira mountains and the uh, Cameroon Nigeria border. So um, they can find anything, anyone, uh, because Amnesty International reports about 2,000 women and children have been kidnapped since the uh, insurgents started using this technique in the last year and a half. So uh, they expect that the, the further they go into Sambisa Forest, as they destroy these various camps, uh, they are going to find and they're hoping to find more people. In fact, the military has already called Boko Haram insurgents and some combatants to surrender before it's too late, saying that the exercise is not aimed at killing everyone in sight, but they're giving them an opportunity to come out and surrender. And they're also telling uh, uh, innocent civilians who have been conscripted into Boko Haram uh, to try to find uh, troops in, 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 in the area and, and turn themselves in. Very briefly before I let you go, Adore, the timing seems very interesting. Of course, this is the transition period between Good Luck Jonathan leaving office and Muhammadu Buhari taking office. Of course, he is a former general and has vowed to uh, squash this insurgency of Boko Haram. Does this give hope that Buhari will be effective and in, some might say far more effective than Jonathan has been able to do to be against this insurgency? That's right. The turn of events has been very surprising, uh, especially uh, seeing that Nigerians and the military pretty much felt that they had to cower down to Boko Haram. Uh, but we saw at the uh, end of January uh, the uh, 
coordination uh, from the uh, neighboring countries that really spurred this whole thing. Uh, and now we see the Nigerian army picking up, uh, pretty much uh, people saying just trying to pick up its own image as well. Uh, and good luck, Jonathan, it was believed only uh, took this seriously when he really saw that uh, he faced uh, the threat of losing losing power and of course that eventually happened but uh, notwithstanding that his administration while it still has a few uh, days left in its twilight uh, trying to uh, make sure that they do as much as possible to uh, secure uh, that area and get rid of Boko Haram. They're not going to be able to finish the job uh, before uh, Buhari takes over but uh, many people believe Buhari being that he's a former military mm -hmm. and uh, former military head of state and one time administrator for that region that he is better placed to uh, bring the insurgency to a grinding halt. Adurai Ochumba, thank you so much that, for that report. French President Francois Hollande is vowing harsh punishment to French peacekeepers found guilty of child sex abuse in the Central African Republic. A leaked UN report says 16 French peacekeepers abused children at a refugee camp in Car. The victims reportedly include a nine-year-old boy and his friend who were allegedly forced to carry out a sex act by two French officers. Fighting is intensifying in Mali. Swedish peacekeepers repelled two rebel attacks in, on Timbuktu. Meanwhile, a pro-government militia says it recaptured territory from rebel fighters, but the rebels are also claiming victory. And Kenya's interior minister is admitting that security officers ignored intelligence reports in the recent terrorist attack on a university campus. He also conceded that the response was poorly coordinated. The Somali-based Islamist group Al-Shabaab killed 148 people during the day-long siege. And coming up on Arise America, remembering one of America's biggest defeats, the fall of Saigon 40 years ago.